In this example, we're looking at a trapezoidal channel. We're told that the flow rate in the channel is 8.4 meters cubed per second. We're given the channel dimensions, told that the roughness or the Manning's n value of the channel is 0.02, the longitudinal slope is 0.005, and what we're trying to do is find the flow depth for the discharge of 8.4 meters cubed per second. So what we want to do is try to work out what the depth of the flow is going to be at this given discharge. So the starting point for this type of example would be to think about the continuity equation. So we know that the discharge is going to be the velocity of water in the channel times by the cross-sectional area of the channel. And we know that we can find the velocity through Manning's equation. So the velocity given by Manning's equation is the hydraulic radius to 2 over 3 times the square root of the slope of the channel over the roughness and to work out the discharge we're going to times that by the area again because we're timesing our velocity by an area. So this is the expression that's going to give us our, our channel properties as a function of the flow rate Q. So in the previous video we were trying to work out Q for a given set of channel properties where we were given Y and we were trying to work out what Q was. In this example we've actually been told what Q is and we're trying to work back to find out what Y is. So we know that Q is 8.4 meters cubed per second and what we want to do is work out for that given discharge what the flow depth Y is going to be. So we can start out by thinking about what we know. So we know the longitudinal slope, we're given that in the question. We know the roughness, we're given that in the question. We don't know the hydraulic radius and we don't know the cross-sectional area. What we need to do, if we're going to be able to solve this, because we also know Q, is we're going to have to define the hydraulic radius and the cross-sectional area of this channel in a way that the only unknown in the equation is our flow depth y. So we need to make this equation so that the only unknown inside it is the flow depth y. So if we begin by thinking about the definition of the hydraulic radius, we know that the hydraulic radius is the area of the flow divided by the wetted perimeter. And what we know also is that for a trapezoidal section as we were talking about in the previous video, the area of a trapezoidal section is the base plus x times y times y, so y is our flow depth, b is our base width, and x is to do with the gradient, so if we have a 1 in 3 side slope gradient, x will be equal to 3, so for every 1 unit we drop uh, in the vertical, we're moving 3 units in the horizontal, and that's what gives us our definition of x as 3 divided by the definition of the wetted perimeter, which is b plus 2y times by the square root of 1 plus x squared. Next again is that term related to the gradient of the side slopes. So what we can now do is we can now plug this definition of the hydraulic radius and the area back into this equation and see what we get. So we know that q it's going to be equal to ua and u is going to be hydraulic radius times square root of the longitudinal slope over Manning's n. So this is now our definition of r because we've put in the relative definitions of the area and the wetted perimeter for our trapezoidal section. So hydraulic radius is going to be b plus xy times y divided by b plus 2y square root of 1 plus x squared to the power of 2 over 3. So all we're doing here is substituting uh, what we've worked out as our definition of the hydraulic radius for r in Manning's equation times by square root of s divided by n and then our cross-sectional area of the flow we know that the area is b plus xy times y so the cross-sectional area is going to be b plus 
x y times y. So this this expression looks quite complicated. We've got quite a lot of terms in this equation, but we are now at a point where the only unknown is actually y, because we know s, we know n, we know q, we're given those in the question, we know b, because that's the base width that we're given in the question, we know x, because we can see what x is by looking at the gradient of the side slopes as one in three tells us that x is going to be three. So actually, the only unknown in this whole expression is our y term. So what we can do is plug all of the numbers in and we should see that our only unknown is y. So we know that the flow needs to be 8.4 meters cubed per second. B is 7. X is 3 times y times y again divided by b which is 7 plus 2y square root of 1 plus x which is 3 squared to the power of 2 over 3 the slope is 0 0.005 our Manning's n in the question is 0 0.02 times by our area which is b plus xy times y so our b term is 7 x is 3 times by y and then times by y again so again we've now just formulated our equation in a way that everything is numbers apart from our y term so the only unknown in this whole equation is y so it might look quite complicated in terms of everything that's going on here, but actually everything is just numbers apart from our y terms. So we can now think about solving this for y, as y is the only unknown. Unfortunately, this is a really difficult equation to rearrange for y. It would take a lot of effort to make y the subject of this equation. I think it's, it's possible, but it is very difficult. So what we can actually do to give us a simple way of solving it is just approach this through a process of trial and error. So we can enter values of y in meters, see what flow that gives us in meters cubed per second, and we can keep varying y until our value of q is equal to 8.4. So if we have an initial guess at a value of y, let's say we call y 0.3 meters, we plug 0.3 into this equation where our y terms are, you'll get a discharge of 3.5 meters cubed per second, which is obviously too small, so we need to increase our y value. So let's say we increase y to 0 0.6. If we plug 0 0.6 into the equation for y, then what that will give us is a discharge of 11.5. So this is now too big. 11.5 is bigger than 8.4, so we need to go down again. So if we go down to 0 point, let's say 0 0.4, and we plug 0 0.4 in place of all of the y's in this equation, that will give us a discharge of 5.7 meters cubed per second, so too small again, so we need to increase the value of y slightly. If we enter a value of 0 0.5, then that gives us a q of 8.4, which is exactly what we're looking for. So what we can see is that the value for y for this channel is gonna be 0 0.5. So for your trapezoidal channel, if you want to work out the flow depth from a given value of Q, we need to set up Manning's equation in terms of Q, so Q equals UA. Replace the hydraulic radius and the area with functions where the only unknown in that function is Y. When we get to that point, we can then solve the equation by a process of trial and error to get to our final flow rate Q.